We're going to cover how to debug scripts. In particular, we're going to use the spider. Um, so if you go ahead and open that up, uh, spider. Uh, this is going to be the desktop um, app. OK, so when it, it's going to come up, we're going to uh, see this interface. We're going to paste in some sample code. And then we're going to uh, work through some of the bugs. There's going to be about um, seven or eight of them um, that we're going to work through, and and see if we'll see if we can find all of the bugs, fix them. There's types of syntax errors, and then there's also other types of bugs that you know, are more logical, um, just errors in the program to give a, an answer, but it might be incorrect. Okay, so this is Spider. Uh, for those of you who have done debugging in Python before, you might have used the PDB. Um, or IPDB if you're in the IPython notebook that's a package for debugging. We're going to use Spider though because it, it simplifies things in terms of a, um, you know, the console is here, our variables are going to be listed here. So to come and get the um, source code for this, come to the uh, course website, apmonitor.com slash CHE 263, and then we're going to come down here to homework and uh, one of the files that you'll download as part of assignment 11 is going to be um, this this uh, py file this is going to be problem number six as part of that homework i'm just going to go ahead and copy that out of there so i can open it up in spider okay so there's spider um, what i'll do then is go file open let me just go to my desktop and open it up Okay, so here's the um, here's the console, um, and then what we'll do is first of all just let me go ahead and close temp there. Uh, is is go ahead and just try to run it. Okay, so the the first thing to do is to go ahead and fix the syntax errors. Okay, and so you see the first one it ran, and you'll see that um, it says invalid uh, syntax right here, and then it points to the place where. Um, you know, it might be missing something in this case. Um, let's go ahead and just go to that uh, location, go ahead and select it, and then it'll bring you down to um, this area right here. And it said that the error was right, um, right here. Okay, so that's just a colon there that you need. And then if you run it again, you'll see that um, there's going to be another one right here as well. So after the if statement and the else statement, don't forget to add the colon. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save that and then hit the green arrow up here again. Uh, that's going to allow you to run it and then we'll see uh, the next area uh, where there's a problem. Okay, so it, um, okay, so we have another error. A lot of times uh, the best thing to do is to uh, look for, you know, the first error in the list if there's a lot of errors. Um, in this case, it just, um, the first meaningful error that it gave us is, pointing to this line right here, okay, from this integrating this function. So we're going to go to line uh, 69 and then take a look at this. So what I'll do is, uh, first of all, just add a break right there. Let's just go ahead and, well, actually, let's add a break point, okay. So um, you can you can add a, you can add a break point, um, you know, just coming to this um, and then double clicking that line and it'll add a little red a dot right there. If you run it, okay, then it's going to then uh, let's see, let's see if I can run this in debug mode instead. Okay, so we'll debug the file versus run it. If you run it, it won't stop at those breakpoints. But if you click the debug or Control F5, then it will debug. Okay, so this is using IPDB. It's just a nice graphical user interface for that. You can go to Variable Explorer, for example, and see you know, what variables are in your problem. If you need to adjust this, um, you get to get kind of right here on the edge. You can drag that over and see a little bit better about what's happening. Okay, so right here, um, you know, there's an error with that. But let's go ahead and just look at um, the, I'll just put result equals, and then let me go ahead and just copy this part, see what that is returning. Okay, okay. so I have new result, and it's a tuple. Okay, so uh, it returned two things. And I, so I need to integrate, or so I need to just get the very first one. The error here is that uh, we're trying to, you know, divide both of these tuples, this, this uh, 
a tuple is a multiple of numbers that are um, together. So it returned two things. Um, and if I do help uh, integrate dot quad, I'll see some, oh, there's no help there. Okay, so um, you'd have to go to like an online source, like help um, integrate quad Python, okay? And that is apparently, let me type that into a Google search instead. Okay, help integrate dot um, quad, and then that'll come up with um, a reference here. So the two things it's going to uh, return are, you know, the, the integral function from A to B, and then it's also going to have an error as well. Okay, the absolute error of the convergence. So we only want to take the very first thing from that. So if I just do um, integrate dot quad, and then I had PS zero to time, or uh, zero to 24, and I just took the very first element of that, then it's going to return a number. Okay, so let me come back in here and just put in zero there. So so what I did on this is it wasn't so much about the integrate.quad function, but it's more about um, you know seeing how to interact with this IPDB uh, through the um, you know the spider interface. Okay, where you can type commands, you can pause, you can step, uh, you can step through this, uh, you can stop the debugger, and so forth. Okay, so so let's go ahead and just um, run this one more time and see where our next error. I'm going to remove that breakpoint and then go ahead and run it again. Okay, so it says first of all that. Um, okay, so here it is. It's running uh, again. It's just a little bit cryptic here in terms of the messages. If you're not familiar with it, but it says my next um, my next uh, error is right here on line 72 where PLT is not defined. So let's go ahead and just define this. Um, we needed to import um, matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. Okay, we forgot to import that package so we could use it. Okay, sometimes we just put this at the very top. We import all of our packages right up here. Okay, and you'll see that we had done that but we just named it plot instead. So I'm just going to replace that as PLT. I'm going to go ahead and save it again. Let's go ahead and run it again. F5 or the green button. Okay, so here's another error right here. This is, um, let's just go to that one. Now that it went into a, um, that didn't help us very much. Let's go back up and just see what we can find with this. Okay, so we were trying to plot something. Okay on this uh, plot right here. Um, hmm, let's go right here. Line 88 homework, line 79. Okay, so we went, we plotted this and just looking at this, there's an error here. Um, and it doesn't necessarily tell us where it is, but if you look at it, you'll see that this is just misspelled. Uh, the label is misspelled there. So I had the L and the E transposed there. Go ahead and save it again. Run it one more time. Okay, so it runs now. Um, okay, so there's some solar power and mean power generated these two plots. Let's go up and see if there are any other errors here. Okay, so it ran. This is where we started the next uh, next run right here. Um, but it says that the total energy in a day is 0.0. .0. So this is going to get into more of the logical errors. Now that we have all the syntax taken care of, we need to go through and validate um, some of our results. Okay, so um, let's see. We've got, um, uh, let's see, let's go through this. Okay, so if you go back to the um, this paper right here, let's just go ahead and select that. We'll have to go back and just look at the equations. Um, let me get rid of these parentheses there just so I can go right to it. Now if you're on a university campus that subscribes to this then you'll have access to the article. If not, then um, you probably won't. 
Okay, so you'll have to download this and then take a look at some of the equations. Um, now one of them that isn't quite right with this, um, if you go down through equations, um, I believe it's 5 through 13, it's the equations that are in this article right here, uh, or, or in this uh, script right here, and there's just a problem with this, um, you know, this line right here. So go through and, and take a look at that. The, um, you know, I think it's just a problem with the parentheses there, you know, where the parentheses are located. Um, and, and so you want to, uh, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and go here. One of the ways to just ver verify parentheses and the, and the correct location is to um, just highlight one of the uh, sides of the parentheses and I'll show you the matching one on the other side. Okay, so here I am right here going through the parentheses and it's just a little bit hard to see with this long line so I'm going to go ahead and drag this one over so I can look at the whole equation um, together. Okay, so let's see, I'm just going through this with the paper, okay, so it looks like I've got a, mis, uh, a mismatch parenthesis um, right here okay where I want to multiply um, okay that whole thing right there okay so just a problem with the parentheses um, just to fix uh, you know what's multiplied first versus subtracted or added okay and then uh, the final thing that I want to do is, is run it let's just look at our energy again okay total energy a day is still zero alright so I'm gonna come down here to um, you know, this is, I'm trying to get the very last point in the horizon. So another thing you can do is just uh, print statements. Print statements are nice. I'll just print uh, yes at the very end. Energy stored. Okay, and if I make this just a little bit wider on this side, I can see this array. Okay, so you can see that we're just plotting that, this energy stored. Um, it says it's zero, um, but here is our array. Now you can see the answer should be the 9.37, the one at the very end of that. Um, and, and so if you come down to uh, this, I was displaying uh, the negative zero element, but if I want to get um, you know, the very last one, I do uh, negative one instead, and that'll give me the very last one. If you do zero, that's going to be the very first element. And so the error here was that negative zero does not give the last element, it just still gives uh, the first element. So you need to do a negative one there. Okay, so there is our last one, and then if we run it, uh, it's going to run and give us um, the correct answer here. Okay, so that concludes this uh, brief tutorial exercise on, on debugging. Um, you know, we gave you this script with this uh, interesting problem about high-altitude, long-endurance aircraft and energy storage, and there were um, about eight um, or so bugs in here, some of them syntax, which are probably the easiest ones to find, and then others that are more logical or, you know, parentheses out of place, but it's still going to run, but it might give you the wrong answer. And those might be the hardest ones um, to try to find when you're debugging. Uh, but again, some of the tools that you have, this is a nice graphical interface for, you know, the eye, um, this, uh, this, this kind of this iPython version of the debugger, the iPDB, um, you know, and it shows you all of the variables, it shows you the console here, and then over here it shows you the code. Uh, you can run in debug mode, you can step through your code, you can step into, you can step out of. Um, until it returns from a function and you can just continue you know, in, including breakpoints along the way whenever you want to stop and then uh, continue again you kind of step through and see the evolution of these variables being built. The, the final way to debug just to summarize is, is to include print statements um, you know like we did here with the print uh, ES where at a certain place you can just print out results and it's going to show up in your console window.